Hey everybody and welcome to another Jamovi tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to go over a module that I, uh, as I was looking through and doing my other video, recent videos on Jamovi, Jamovi and Jazz comparison, um, I noticed there was a module that I haven't seen, a teaching module that I hadn't seen, that I had installed, but I didn't see. We are going to talk about the distraction and, and I'll show how it's spelled in just a second. Uh, that's the module we're going to be talking about today. It is a teaching module. It does not require any data to be um, uploaded here. So I, I don't have any data. Uh, but what I do want to mention before we get started is we are using the current build of the program, Jamovi, version 2.0.0, released just a few days ago at the time of recording. So we are going to jump right into that. Okay, so how you find distraction. I have all of them uh, open right now, and we'll go through them in just a second. But what I want to do is I'm going to show you how to get there. So it's in the module uh, button here. So you click on modules. And um, it, it's down here at the at the bottom. And the reason why it's down at the bottom is because uh, there is no scroll yet for this. So, you know, depending on how big your window is and how big you want your um, how big you want your Jamovi window to be, you know, you're not gonna get all of them. And that's why I missed it. Okay, so this is how it's spelled dis distraction and that's because it's about distributions as we'll see and then um, the actions of those distributions and so we're going to talk about um, as far as how to use this as a teaching tool quantiles probabilities of continuous distributions I believe so to get it you go into Jamovi library and um, it'll be part of the it'll be in the available list and so if we uh, oops, I gotta update a few of these if we scroll through and it's probably um, at the there we go uh, by Michael Reese I hope I'm saying that right Reese uh, and Boris Mayer a, or Meyer uh, a tool for calculating and plotting the cumulative distribution function CDF and the quantile function inverse CDF for a number of discrete and continuous distributions so we do have one discrete distribution binomial um, and so <clears throat> that is distraction okay so here we have the uh, I, I, and I open them all um, and we'll click on each of them individually so um, I apparently did not do a uh, normal distribution first, but we'll talk about the t-distribution first. So we click on the t-distribution, and honestly, when you click on, um, oh, uh, actually, I should uh, warn you by saying, if you've got all of these installed, the way to access them and their options is by going to the modules list, scrolling, you know, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. So R is is my last one. So JSQ, CLO matrix, and randomizer, PathQM, all these are probably not going to be over here. But in any case, you would click on distraction, okay, right here, and it would bring up, uh, it would bring up that. And now, the other thing that you can do uh, to clean this up, and I haven't gone through and cleaned it up, obviously, is um, you can uncheck this box if you don't want it to show there. So there are probably some things on this list that I don't need to be on here because it's not the kind of analyses that I do. So I'll go through and I'll uncheck these. I just haven't done that. But that's one way that you can clean up your top bar here. Um, I would still like the option of being able to have all of them and then scroll like Jasp. Um, I've got a side scroll wheel here that works really well in Jasp, and then you just need to implement this into Jamovi. But in any case, this is where you find the analyses. And this, this menu feature is the same feature of you know if I click on here it would be the same thing I would just get um, it is as a drop down but in any case I, I opened them all because I didn't want to keep coming to modules distraction but there you go those are the so those are all five of them we've got a normal t chi squared f and binomial so these are the continuous ones and then we've got the discrete down at the bottom so we're going to start with uh, the t distribution so we have a nice t distribution here uh, symmetrical around the mean of zero if you are familiar with your t values and so by default it sets the degrees of freedom as one and lambda as zero which I imagine is the mean uh, here, not entirely sure why they used that symbol, but be that as it may. So those are default, and that's why you get the default. Now, the things you can use as a teaching tool is show how this changes. So we can compute the probability if x uh, one is equal to zero, and we choose you know x is less than one or zero, x is um, greater than what our x one value is, or x is in between. So we can show um, that, and we can show. And if you do this last one, you have to identify what an x, what your uh, second x variable is. So the probability then gets calculated and shown right here. So if we did x then less than one, then would obviously be 0.5. Uh, if we did greater than one, it would be also 0.5. But if we change this to to um, 1.96, right? And we change the probability of a one-tailed test to 1.96, we get 0.15. But if we did, uh, oh, um, uh, was it 2.64, I believe, is the T, 0.115. Must be missing something. Oh, it's, it's because my degrees of freedom is uh, only one. So if we change this to 10 or something like that, right? And so, you know, we get a T critical value, we change our degrees of freedom to something higher, and we end up with our probability, which is what you would do um, in, you know, which is what you would show in uh, a statistics class, right? You would, you, and you would calculate P by doing like a t-test or something, right? Um, so the other thing that um, we can do is we can compute quantiles. And quantiles are expressed by uh, dotted, uh, dashed, I should say, dashed vertical lines. So we've got dashed vertical lines showing our quantiles. And quantiles are four different uh, or four equal areas, okay? And so if we say that P is equal to 0.5, then these would be our quantiles. But what if we say the P is, we want P to be 0.05, okay? Then you can see that the quantiles, the vast majority of the people 
in the 50 to 75th percentile, the 50th percentile, or yeah, around there is the mean itself, right? Or you can do cumulative quantiles as well, which shows you this. And then of course it gives you the value of the quantile right here. Um, but if you change P to point back to 0.5 and look at cumulative quantile, you can see that it's right there at the middle because that is the addition of the quantiles together, right? So you can do computing the quantiles, uh, computing probabilities, and then it will give you the results of those, right? So if we take away the central in interval, and the reason why it's only showing the central interval quantiles because it's not going to map the other two. Uh, moving on to the chi-square distribution, similar thing set up here. If we change this to, you know, a little bit bigger, um, you can see there's a little tail here at zero. A little bit of a tail here, so we can compute probability, and we can show that there, if we set x to 12, let's say, and we can get the probability that anything less than 12 is 0.715, right? And so that will, again, be a way to test, uh, a way to show what happens when you change degrees of freedom, the mean, uh, we can change to, we can move this over to 5, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and you can see that 5 is right here, and there's that lambda bit right there. Um, again, computing quantiles. However, computing quantiles is not the same as t-tests here. You can only change your p-value. Um, it will only give you the central quantile. F distributions, very similar. One thing that we're going to add here is a second degrees of freedom. So this is a 310 ratio. Um, yeah, that's a decent. We can do 3100 and see what happens to the curve when we change that. And there we go. It gets a little teeny bit, teeny bit tighter, right? If we change that back to 10, you can see it gets very very little let's change it to 500 uh to see there we go it's a little fatter a little fatter there um although does it get a little fatter it, it yeah, more of the tail is represented on the graph i suppose more of the tail and again you can commu uh, compute your probabilities uh of course we are going to do um is greater than one because one is the mean of uh, of an f distribution Okay, right. That's when the ratios of the error terms are the same, right? So they're the same, and so it, it cancels out, and that's the average, right? No difference between the errors. So there you go. Um, so if we were going to say that, um, you know, our value is equal to the mean here, and then the probability is, uh, what's the probability greater than that? You can see that it's about 0.4 with a lambda of zero. Let's see what happens when we change lambda to a five. Let's see what happens there. Okay, it gets shorter. All right. If we change it, can it go below zero? It cannot go below zero. So let's change this lambda to 100. Ooh, that's an interesting. Now I'm not entirely sure what lambda is in this. I would keep lambda constant. I, I would. I'm not saying you have to, but I would. And leave, in the, leave in the comments below what, um, what lambda is in this situation, because I'm not entirely sure. Huh, okay. Uh, but this is an inverse. Uh, this looks like an inverse F probability here. We can also compute quantiles. Same thing. Well, let me change this back to zero so we can actually see the quantile. Uh, again, this is only central quantile uh, because you, you only get to put the uh, p-value in. Um, and so it's only going to give you the, the central quantile. And of course, in this, the average is one. Or the 50, 50th quantile, the central quantile mark, is just about at one. Just about at one. It's uh, 0.794. Uh, and then uh, we've got, before I do binomial, let's look at the... Uh, Normal distribution. Normal distribution's a little bit easier to understand. Perhaps I should have done that one first. Oh, well. We can change the mean and standard deviation here, much like we can do with the t-test. I mean, normal distributions and t-distributions are very similar. Um, again, uh, we can change this mean to anything. We can change the standard deviation to anything. You know, if we change the standard deviation to 10, how, how much... Oh, they don't change the curve. <laughs> they change the x-axis. I guess it's easier to change the x-axis than it is to change the shape of the curve. That's kind of funny. Okay, what if I do 100 then? Curve stays the same. <laughs> That's good stuff. All right, let's change it back to one. Uh, but we can compute our probabilities. Again, um, 1.96. I think I was confusing uh, Z, Z and T when I was doing that. 1.96, we're going to do P is greater than. And there we go. We've got our um, half of, of, of our uh, 0.025. There we go. There's our 0.025, our cutting this in half. So this is our would be our two-tailed test if we did that with 1.96. Uh, 2.64, I believe, is 0.004. So that, that must be a T crit value. I don't remember uh, because it's uh, 2.64, so it's 2.6 standard deviations. Yeah, I'm not sure. So that is a uh, 0.004. So multiply that by two is still only 0.008. Uh, we can also compute quantiles again. Same thing with the t distribution um, is you can do the central interval quantile or you can do the qu uh, cumulative quantile. Uh, so if we set it at 0.5, then obviously it is zero. And that's the probability value. So if we set the probability at like 0.9, right, that's going to place that just above one. 1.282. We take this off. Right, you can just see that it does that. Perfect. All right, last one is binomial distribution. Binomial distribution is the discrete distribution, although it's set up to look a lot like this um, normal distribution. Although this normal distribution, once they started adding the a few things in here, um, it got it got um, I guess cut off. Uh, all right. 
So binomial distribution, we can change the size and the probability of it, which changes the shape. So if we change the probability from 0.5 to 0.25, you can see what shape happens here, right? It's uh, skewed to the right because the vast majority is closer to 0.25. Um, and that's represented by the, the height of the bars here. So uh, again, if I change this to 0.75, uh, it'll get skewed to the left. Okay. This, and the skew represents the tail. So when I say skew to the left, that's because this, this, this skew is over here. All right. Um, again, you can, uh, let's change this back to 0.5. So it's nice and center. Oops. Perfect. Right. And we can compute probability. So we can do P is less than the probability that um, we have less than the value that we have decided. Uh, we can do uh, or equal to. Sorry, that's the that's so this is the uh, new one for binomial distributions, because because it's discrete, you can identify the exact probability when a value or you can identify the probability when you have specified an exact value as opposed to a uh, density function, um, which the other ones are, which the other ones are density functions. They're continuous. Um, and then we, you can also do the less than greater than um, or in between. Right. So if we do that, the probability stays the same. If we do greater however then we get all of them in there right so if we're saying that um, we're looking at zero the value of zero which is over here and we're saying that any what's the probability of of my data being greater than zero well that's 100 because it identifies all of them right so we could do with this setup size 10 and probability of 0.5 if we set this as five right and we did we looked at that we then now have the information that the probability of uh, any x value being greater than five is 0.62 which is pretty cool. Um, we can also compute quantiles again uh, because binomial distributions are kind of like normal distributions yet discrete. Um, <clears throat> we can set up the cumulative quantile or the central interval quantile. And so it'll give us the two quantile values for that. So we have uh, x1 equals four and then x2 equals six. And you can see that there, if we change the cumulative quantile, it puts it at five. And that's because we set our x to five. All right, and that is how you do the distraction, distraction, module in Jamovi. If you have any comments, suggestions, or feedback, please leave them down below, especially telling me what Lambda is because I'm a dummy. Uh, if you like this content, consider uh, subscribing. If you like this video, consider leaving a like. Thanks for watching.